was a beautiful morning on the island of Sodor. Thomas the tank engine's blue paint sparkled in the sunshine as he puffed happily along his branch line with... He was feeling very pleased with himself. Hello, Thomas, whistled Percy. You look splendid. Yes, indeed, boasted Thomas. Blue is the only proper color for an engine. Oh, I don't know. I like my brown paint, said Toby. Well, well, anyway, huffed Thomas. Blue is the only color for a really useful engine. Everyone knows that. Later, Thomas was resting when Percy arrived. A large hopper was loading his freight cars full of coal. Thomas was still being cheeky. Careful, he warned. Watch out with those silly cars. And by the way, went on Thomas, those buffers don't look very safe to me. Last load poured down. Help, help, cried Thomas. Get me out. Thomas's smart blue paint was covered in coal dust from smoke box to bunker. You look really disgraceful. I'm not disgraceful, choked Thomas. You did that on purpose. Get me out. It took so long to clean Thomas that he wasn't in time for his next train. Toby had to take Annie and Clarabelle. Poor Thomas, whispered Annie to Clarabelle. They were most upset. Thomas was grumpy in the shed that night, but Percy was cross with Thomas for thinking he had made his paint dirty on purpose. Next day, Thomas was feeling more cheerful as he watched Percy bring his cars from the junction. Have a drink, said his driver. Then you'll feel better. It was time for Thomas to leave. He had seen everything. Now Percy has learned his lesson, too, he chuckled to himself. Night, the two engines made up their quarrel. I didn't cause your accident on purpose, Thomas, whispered Percy. Of course, replied Thomas, and I'm sorry I teased you. Your green paint looks splendid again, too. In future, we'll both be more careful of coal. Afraid? Rubbish, said Gordon. We didn't want the poor thing to hurt herself by running up against us. Thank you, Bertie, for keeping your promise, said Thomas. You're a very good friend indeed. Sir Topham Hatt works his engines hard, but they are very proud when he calls them really useful. What, already? You're not that old, replied Thomas cheekily. Thomas was only teasing. Out of old iron, and he is so slow, he makes us wait. Thomas and Percy were indignant. Why, Edward could beat you in a race any day. Really, said James. I should like to see him do it. Thomas was on his way to the harbor with a trainload of metal pilings. They were needed to make the harbor wall firm and safe. Thomas eyed the newcomer doubtfully. A what engine? A traction engine, explained Trevor. Yes, of course, replied Thomas, but he was still puzzled. Workmen coupled Trevor's car to Thomas's train, and soon they were ready to start their journey. I'm glad Sir Topham Hatt needs me, called Trevor. I don't have enough to do sometimes, you know, although I can work anywhere, in orchards, on farms, in scrapyards, even at harbors. But you don't run on rails, puffed Thomas. I don't need rails to be useful, replied Trevor. You wait and see. Cars had been derailed, blocking the line, and stone slabs lay everywhere. We must get these pilings passed, said Thomas's driver. Trevor was as good as his word, he muttered cheerfully to himself. 
Later, Thomas brought Annie and Clarabelle to visit him. Thomas was most impressed. Now I understand how useful a traction engine can be. The coaches were full of children. Trevor gave them rides along the harbor. He liked this best of all. Everyone was sorry when it was time for Trevor to go. Thomas pulled him to the junction. Thomas pretended not to see. He whistled gaily to make Trevor happy. I'll come and see you if I can, he promised. The vicar will look after you, and there's plenty of work for you now at the orchard, but we may need you again at the harbor someday. Percy works in the yard at the big station. I shall care, you know. Would you like me to explain? I wonder what backing signals are, he thought. Never mind, I'll manage. He puffed crossly to his freight cars and felt better. Here, Percy, show Doc around. Sometimes he'd see Thomas. Well done, Percy. Sir Topham Hatt is very pleased with us. An airfield was close by. Percy heard the airplanes zooming overhead all day. The noisiest of all was a helicopter. Thomas the tank engine was ill. Workmen had tried to make him better, but it was no use. Thomas felt very miserable. When Thomas came back, Annie and Clarabelle told him how well Duck had managed. Thomas was so pleased to be home that he soon forgot to be jealous. The works had left Thomas's handbrake very stiff. It made his brakes seem as if they were on, when in fact they were not. As a result, he and his coaches often overran the platform. Thomas found this most embarrassing. His driver and fireman learned to be extra careful. But one day, Thomas's fireman was ill, and a relief man took his place. The fireman had fastened the coupling, and firemen had forgotten all about Thomas's handbrake. Thomas simmered happily. Not long now, he thought, and suddenly he felt his wheels begin to move. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He tried to whistle a warning, but he couldn't do that either. The conductor, driver, fireman, and passengers were all stranded on the platform. Stop, stop, shrieked Annie and Clarabelle. But Thomas, with plenty of steam, kept on going. The alarm went down the line. At last, Thomas was tiring. I need to stop, I need to stop, he panted wearily. They entered the platform slowly enough for the inspector to act. Judging his moment, the inspector scrambled into the cab and screwed the brakes on. At last, Thomas stopped. Both he and the inspector were very relieved. Then they thanked Harold. Thomas, remarked the inspector, we must never let this happen again. Wearily, Thomas agreed with him. Thomas was looking at the board on the key. Danger. We mustn't go past it, he said. That's orders. Danger means falling down something, said Thomas. I went past danger once and fell down a mine. I can't see a mine, said Percy. He didn't know that the foundations of the key had sunk. The rails now sloped downward to the sea. It was dark when they brought floating cranes to rescue Percy. He was too cold and stiff to move by himself. Thomas was helping to pull the cars away when Sir Topham Hatt arrived. Sir Topham Hatt watched the rescue operation, then he had more news for Duck. But sir, they don't like me, they like Diesel. The engines are sorry and want you back.
A few days later, when he came home, Thomas grew crosser and crosser. Time's time, he grumbled. Why should I keep my passengers waiting while Henry and James dawdle about all day on viaducts? Run my train on time, for one thing, retorted Thomas. He hurried away before Henry could answer. Late again, he remarked, as Thomas panted wearily in. We may be friends, but I thought you could go fast, Thomas. It's time we had another race. Thomas let off steam loudly. Rubbish, he hissed fiercely. It's those main line engines. They dither about on the viaduct, and they blame Sir Topham Hatt's workmen. It's just an excuse for laziness, if you ask me. I'm sorry, Thomas, he puffed. It's lucky for you I'm a guaranteed connection, grumbled Thomas. Before James could answer, he puffed importantly away. Come along, come along, he panted to the coaches. Annie and Clarabel did their best, but Thomas soon found that he couldn't save much time. Suddenly, Thomas saw Bertie ahead. His radiator was steaming. What's the matter, asked Thomas. You should be at the station by now. You're late. Thank goodness you're late, too. Can you take my passengers, please? They'll never get home otherwise. Of course, agreed Thomas. He now felt sorry for Bertie and promised to get help at the next station. Already he felt much more cheerful, and Bertie's passengers, traveling in Annie and Clarabel, all reached home safely. When Bertie was better, he came to thank Thomas. That's all right, replied Thomas. I'm glad I could help. There are times when being late isn't such a bad thing after all. Two friends went back to work. Thomas the tank engine has worked his branch line for many years and knows it very well. You know just where to stop, Thomas, laughed his driver. You could almost manage it without me. Thomas had become conceited. He didn't realize his driver was joking. Later, he boasted to the others. Driver says I don't need him now, uh, boasted Thomas. I'm not scared. I would then. You'll see. The next morning, the firelighter came. Thomas drowsed comfortably as the warmth spread through his boiler. Thomas suddenly remembered. Silly stick in the muds, he chuckled. I'll show them. Driver said I could manage without him. I'll just go out and then I'll stop and weesh. That'll make them jump. Thomas thought he was being clever, but really he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his controls. He soon found his mistake. He tried to weesh, but he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. Horrors, cried Thomas, and shut his eyes. The house rocked, broken glass tinkled, plaster was everywhere. He peered into the room through its leaves. He couldn't speak. More plaster fell. This time it fell on Thomas. Thomas felt depressed. Workmen propped up the house with strong poles and laid rails through the garden. Then, the Scottish twin engines Donald and Douglas arrived. Donald and Douglas, puffing hard, managed to haul Thomas back to safety. Bits of fencing, the bush, and a broken window frame festooned his front, which was badly twisted. Thomas was in disgrace. You're in a lot of trouble, Thomas. I know, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Thomas's voice was muffled behind his bush. 
You must go to the works and have your front mended. It will be a long job. Yes, sir. A, a d diesel, sir? Thomas spluttered. Yes, Thomas. Diesels never gallivant off to breakfast in station masters' houses. Next day, Thomas came back. And Percy was sent to be mended. Annie and Clarabelle were delighted to see Thomas again, and he took them for a run at once. Thomas's branch line is important, and so is Edward's. Percy, what are you talking about? The ghost train. Driver saw it last night. Where? Asked Thomas and Toby. He didn't say. Oh, it makes my wheels wobble to think of it. Puh, said Thomas. You're just a silly little engine. I'm not scared. Thomas was being oiled up for his evening train. Percy's had an accident, cried Toby. Poor engine, said Thomas. Botheration. That means I'll be late. Out with it, Toby. I can't wait all evening. Puh. Who cares? Don't be frightened, Toby. I'll take care of you. Oh, dear, exclaimed Thomas. It's getting late. Oh, oh, I'd no idea. Oh, I, I must find Annie and Clarabelle. It was morning when Thomas returned. Where have you been? asked Toby. Ah, uh, well, said Thomas. I, I knew you'd be sad about Percy, and I, uh, I, I didn't like to intrude. I, I slept in the freight shed, and... Oh, sorry, can't stop. Gotta see a coach about a train. Toby then takes them to the hills for the farmers to feed their stock. Percy gave a ghostly whistle. Don't be frightened, Thomas, he laughed. It's only me. Your ugly fizz is enough to frighten anyone, said Thomas. You're like ugly indeed. Caterpillar with red stripes continued Thomas firmly. You crawl like one, too. I don't. Who's been late every afternoon this week? It's the hay. I can't help that, said Thomas. Time's time, and Sir Topham Hatt relies on me to keep it. I can't if you crawl in the hay till all hours. Green caterpillar indeed, fumed Percy, as he set off to collect some hay to take to the harbor. Everyone was waiting. Thomas seethed impatiently. Ten minutes late. I warned him. Passengers will complain. And Sir Topham Hatt. Then they all saw Percy. They laughed and shouted. Look what's crawled out of the hay, teased Thomas. Look about hairy caterpillars, puffed Thomas. It's worth being late to have seen you. Thomas told Toby all about it. Instead of talking about sensible things like playing ghosts, Thomas and Toby made jokes about woolly bear caterpillars and other creatures which crawl about in hay. Percy thought they were really being very silly indeed. It was two days before Christmas. Many children were expected on the island of Sodor. Quickly now, he said. Our Christmas tree has arrived just in time. Duck can look after Annie and Clarabelle until you get back. Will we be able to sing carols too, asked Thomas. It would be nice to sing carols again, sighed Thomas as he set off on his important mission. Thomas collected the tree safely, but large snowdrifts lay ahead. I mustn't be late, he thought. Sir Topham Hatt is relying on me. Whistling bravely, Thomas tried to move, but he couldn't. Thomas was snowed under. We must assume he is stranded. Suddenly, he came to a drift that was deeper than the rest. Help! Help! No, listen, insisted Donald. Over here! Oh, it's Thomas! Thomas's driver and fireman, who had taken shelter at a nearby cottage, joined the rescue. Snowdrift. Snowdrift. 
As a reward for all your hard work, you may go and enjoy the carols. One, two, three! Suddenly, like magic, the station was flooded with lights. But Thomas the tank engine and all his friends, who had... It's no fun getting stuck in the snow, whispered Thomas to Percy, but it was worth it for this party. Happy holiday, Percy. Happy holiday, everyone. It was time for Thomas to leave. He had seen everything. <laughs>